Hello, this is Timothy Perfect from Two Canoe Software, and I want to show you one of the great new features of MDS5, the ability to do um, use be able to put a Apple Silicon Mac into DFU mode and restore it without touching the actual physical Mac. So you don't have to do any abstract keystrokes or anything like that in order to be able to um, restore that machine. So it means you can do it remotely. It also means that you don't have to hold down these keystrokes to get it into DFU mode and then completely wipe the machine and put the OS onto it. And that's an important because if you don't know the state of the machine, you don't care, you just want to get the OS res uh, restored, or you want the quickest way to install Mac OS onto Apple Silicon. Um, it also is a great security feature when you get a, a Mac and you're not sure of the state of it, you're not trusting the software on it, you can completely wipe it and re reinstall Mac OS. In fact, some companies do that when they get a brand new Mac, they'll restore the Mac OS onto it. That way they know, one, it has the OS on it that they want, the most recent version or whatever version they want, most likely most recent. And secondly, that hasn't been tampered with on the way um, into their building. So it allows them to completely start from a known state. Um, and the way that it works is, so let me switch over and show you uh, MDS. So I'm in MDS here and I will switch over to the Apple Silicon Restore. And you can see there's a reboot, DFU mode, and restore up Apple Configurator. And so right now I have this admin Mac that's sitting in front of me and I have, uh, let me switch over to my overhead. You can see that uh, I have this Mac here that it's currently, uh, I think, believe it's in DFU mode. It doesn't really matter what state it's in. So I can just plug in the cable from the uh, DFU port on one Mac, which is the one that's running MTS, to this one, that my target one. And so I will click on reboot, and uh, that will may reboot this machine. So you can kind of see that it's, it's set up, and uh, it doesn't matter what state it's in. So you can see I just rebooted it, and it started up, and it's booting into the OS. Doesn't matter, I don't have to wait for it. I can put it in DFU mode or reboot it again if I wanted to. So let me go ahead and put it in DFU mode. So I'll click DFU mode. You can see it immediately turned off. No hesitation, single click it, click of a button. And if I go into Apple Configurator, you can see that um, it will be in DFU mode. Let me just restart up Apple Configurator, make sure that it's recognizing it. There we go. It's in Apple Configurator. Oh, it's in uh, DFU mode now. Um, and so I can go ahead and restore that with Apple Configurator, or I can click on this button that's Restore with Apple Configurator 2, which will use the, uh, the command line utility of uh, Apple Configurator 2 uh, CFG util to restore with Apple Configurator. That will restore the most um, most uh, recent version of macOS. And if you were if you wanted to choose a uh, older version, you can just click on Options and select the um, a prior version. If you have a custom IPSW. Oh, in fact, I was well, I was doing 13.3.1, which I believe is most recent. Maybe not. But anyways, uh, if you unselect this, it will have the most recent version. If you select it, it'll use that uh, custom IPSW. You can, of course, download that IPSW from the Download Mac OS tab or section as well. So that makes it really easy right within the app to be able to do that. So we didn't want to stop there. So we added another feature, which is uh, automatically. So if you click on start, it'll warn you and say anytime a machine, an Apple Silicon machine or any machine is plugged into this port, it'll see if it can detect it, put it in DFU mode, and then use Apple Configurator to restore it. So it's a great way to just walk up, plug it in, and have it restore. You can only do one at a time because it requires the DFU port for each one. And the DFU port is the one that's closest to the hinge or closest to the Ethernet port. So that, that will um, help you identify it. But if you have the cable between those two ports, it'll be recognized and restored. And so this is a great way to automate that process. And of course, it'll use the options, the settings and options to be able to to restore it. Um, there's another option which is remove Apple Configurator temporary cache files, which is something that um, can build up over time, anywhere from 10 to uh, 15 gigabytes per restore. And so it's good uh, to just clear those out and MDS will do that automatically for you, which is a great kind of feature. Um, so that's for doing it one to one, right? If you have this, you want to be able to plug it in, have one Mac, restore it to another one. But we want it to do better. We want to be able to restore kind of at a uh, larger scale. So if you have a lot of machines to do, you want to be able to wipe and reinstall kind of at, in parallel. So um, what I have here is I underneath this MacBook Air, you can see that there is a 
there is a uh, Mac Mini, and that's a um, an M1 Mac Mini. And you can see it's uh, it's actually an amber light here. It's in DFU mode. But if I take this and instead of plugging it directly from one machine to another, what I'll do is I'll plug them both into this Acroname hub. And this Acroname hub is one that we're reselling called the Acroname hub, USB-C hub for MDS. And MDS controls this to allow you to restore, to put it in DFU mode and restore it in a programmatic way or just by clicking on buttons. So for this one um, here of the one, Port two is connected up to the Mac Mini already. Uh, port one, I'll plug into this uh, into this MacBook Air. I'll make it so you can see both of them. I want to put my switch over there. And finally, I'll take the cable that comes out of my admin machine and plug it into port zero. Okay, there we go. Plugged into port zero. I'll move the cable out of the way. And now I'll go back into MDS and go over to the tab for acronym hub. I'll click on this and I'll refresh this. There it goes. So you can see that port one says it has a MacBook Air and a uh, port two has a Mac Mini 9.1. And so let me move this, this out of the way a little bit. And you can see down in the corner that we actually have some statistics about it, which is kind of neat. If we have the MacBook Air is currently at 20 volts, and it's not drawing any current. Right? Because I have a power supply plugged into it, it's drawing the power from that power supply. The Mac Mini, uh, it is at five volts because it's not even doing, it's got that external power supply. Um, and it has what tells you what port it's in, what the type is, and what the ECID is. Um, and so that allows me to now select them, know which port they're plugged into. This actually, this hub serial number will be unique. So I'll know which hub it is and which port it's in. So now I can programmatically control uh, putting it in DFU mode as well as um, uh, be able to restore it. So let me go ahead and I'll do for the MacBook Air, I will, uh, I gotta move this out of the way, put this back here. I will go back and click on uh, reboot uh, here. So you can see that I just programmatically rebooted that MacBook Air. And now, um, if you can see this uh, light, you can see this light will go off on a reboot. The, oops, I'll do the Mac Mini reboot. There we go, there's the other one. Okay, it just chimed. And you should see on the display behind it, the Mac Mini will come up. So now I have programmatic control over reboot and putting it in a DFU mode, and I also can restore it um, using it programmatically. So you can see the Mac Mini's coming up. There it is, the split screen lit up behind it. You can see that it's showing the, um, the uh, plug in a mouse screen. So let me go ahead and put both of these into DFU mode. So if I select this one and this one, I'll select put in DFU mode. Do you see how fast that was? Bam, happened right away. And then I'll switch over to Apple Configurator and look, both machines are in DFU mode. No hands touch those machines to put it in DFU mode. No holding the power button, no uh, selecting anything, no weird keystrokes, just goes into DFU mode. Um, and we can also go into, um, we can restore these. So we can click on restore and it'll warn me and it'll go ahead and use the Apple Configurator command line to go ahead and restore those machines to whatever you have set in options. If you don't have anything set, it'll restore them, it'll download, unzip, and restore the most uh, recent version of macOS. If you do specify it, it'll use an IPSW that you specified and restore those machines. It takes about 10 minutes per machine, and that uh, will increase as you increase the number. This acronym hub, so let me kind of go to the overhead view version again. So you can see this acronym hub, I've plugged in the, um, to port zero is where the uh, admin Mac, that's called the uh, upstream port, and then the other ones are plugged in the downstream port. This has five downstream ports and one upstream port. It's actually completely programmable, but we've built in support for it to MDS. So it expects port zero to be the upstream port, and the downstream ports are the ones that are uh, plugs the Macs uh, that you're gonna be focused on to restore um, those. So you can do mass restoration, just selecting it and restore it. So that allows you to do five at a time. And one of the nice things is the, the admin Mac that I have right here is a MacBook Pro. It has three 
uh, USB-C ports. I could hang an Acronym Hub off each one and do 15 machines at once um, uh, hook, hooked up to a hub that does five and then have three of those hubs so it would be 15. And so you could do a, a large number at once um, to be able to, to go through um, a, a, a large, uh, maybe a large purchase you have or a large um, redeployment. So this allows you to do things very quickly. So um, let me switch back over. So thank you very much for watching. Again, if you, uh, I'm Tim from Two Canoes. If you uh, want some more information, please visit our website at twocanoes.com slash MDS. And also please join us on the Mac Admin Slack channel. It's, uh, if you go to macadmins.org and join, and then go to the M, uh, Two Canoes dash MDS channel. Um, that's, I, I hang out there as well as a bunch of, it's an active channel and you can ask any questions. Um, the one thing we uh, did change in MDS5 is uh, if you want to download the um, uh, compiled version, it does require a license, but there's a 14-day trial. And um, people are very excited about this because it's really uh, the only programmatic way to put a Mac into uh, Aqua Silicon Mac into a restoration state without um, physically touching it and using a lot of um, physical access to it. So, oh, one thing I want to point out is after you're done with the uh, restoring the Mac uh, OS to these Macs. Um, it, it is a pristine state. It has the version of Mac OS and it comes up to the setup assistant. So at that point, you can d distribute it to your users and they can use Apple's on a Mac device enrollment. Or um, you can use our MDS or our, our Automaton 2 that has three buttons that allows you to install the software. Since the OS is already installed, um, software installation is um, some a few packages and maybe install an admin user or a service account and then a um, um, some scripts that maybe does some final configuration. Um, that can be very quick. It can be a minute or two. So from MDS5 doing the whole th doing the OS wipe and restore with the installer plus the package install was usually about a 26 to 30 minutes. Now using this new methodology with Apple Silicon Restore or with um, Apple Configure Restore, which takes about 10 to 13 minutes and a couple minutes for the scripts. If you automate that with the automaton, you can half the amount of time it takes to set up a Mac on Apple Silicon Mac. Um, and if you have the acronym hub, you can do uh, multiples at one time. So it really is a great help in the efficiency for deploying Macs. So again, thanks for watching. Visit us at twocanoes.com slash MDS for more information. And uh, I'll, I'm looking forward to seeing how you're going to use MDS.